as you know the mauryan empire was huge and governing such a huge empire would obviously have required a very serious planning of administration so let us look how this mauryan empire was administered so as you know even today that the government of india has different set of ministers prime minister and he has a set of cabinet ministers who help them do different activities and govern different parts of the administration so let us see how the mauryan government was divided into different parts for the better administration so as you know the mauryan empire was governed by the king himself and this king now had a council of ministers which was also known as the mantri parishad now this council of ministers or the mantri parishad was again divided into two parts one which was the mantri parishad adhyaksha or was also known as the head of the council of minister and the other ministers now in the mantri parishad adhyaksha we have person known as the purohit who was the chief priest of the empire we had a senapati or who was the commander in chief and we also had yuvraj or the crown prince now in this mantri parishad adhyaksha only we had certain maha mantris or the chief ministers also and the other set of ministers who were present were the maha matyas who were very important ministers and we also had amatyas or the lesser minister who had the role in the administration department now one thing to note over here is that that these mantris were appointed on the basis of their birth so now the mauryan administration was further divided into certain specialized divisions and they were governed by the amatyas now who were the amatyas they were the smaller ministers and the civil servant of various departments like we have the samaharta here what was the function of this department they used to make sure that the revenue is collected the revenue is generated like we have the finance department in today's indian government then we also had the sanidhata what was the role of this sanidhata they used to store and safeguard the collected wealth like today we have the reserve bank of india which safeguards our wealth similarly during the mauryan times the sanidhata used to store and safeguard the wealth now the mauryan empire was further divided into provinces these provinces can be also understood like the states we have today like india is divided into several states earlier the empire used to be divided into provinces so during the mauryan empire the provinces were magadha with its capital at patliputra gandhara at takshila avanti with its capital as ujjain and the southern province with its capital at swarnagiri and the last province that we have that is kalinga was added after kalinga was conquered and now the capital of kalinga was tosali now you can also find these capitals of the provinces like takshila like ujjain tosali patliputra and swarnagiri now these provinces were administered by the kumaras or the arya putras the provinces were further divided into districts and the villages now the districts were governed by the pradeshikas and the villages were administered by people known as the gramikas to ensure that within the governing body the minister did not do any kind of mischief like corruption like bribery so to avoid these kind of mischief there was a spy network that was prevalent in the mauryan administration and people known as the gadha purushas or the secret agents were appointed throughout the empire the army was also divided into certain specialized divisions like the foot soldiers or the infantry horse mounted soldiers or cavalry chariots elephants and the naval power now this army was well equipped with efficient weapons like bows arrows swords and 
shields. Now you see Megasthenes was spellbound seeing the capital city Patliputra. But what made him spellbound? You see this is a large ditch that was dug in the ground. Why? To protect the city. So Megasthenes was spellbound with how efficiently the capital city was made. Now obviously the capital city should be well equipped because the capital city is the major hub of the entire empire. So here as you can see Patliputra is found at the confluence of two rivers that is river Son and Ganga. So communication or transportation would be easier as water transport would be the means. Now can you tell me what was the capital of the modern empire? Takshila, Patliputra or Ujjain? Yes, it is Patliputra. Now, not only was the Mauryan Empire as a whole administered, but even Patliputra, the capital city, had sophisticated administration. Like Patliputra was governed by a council of 30 members and these 30 members were further divided into six committees and each committee had five members. Now what was the role of the committees? The first committee was given the role of registration of the births and deaths. The second committee was entrusted with the collection of the municipal taxes. So the third committee was entrusted with the role of supervision of trade and commerce. The fourth role that was given to the committee was the sale of manufactured goods. The fifth committee was entrusted with the role of the welfare of the foreigners. And the last committee was entrusted with the role to maintain healthy conditions, that is sanitation to maintain healthy conditions. Now that you have seen how sophisticated the administration was, similarly the socio-economic conditions were quite suitable. Like you see in the picture, you can obviously find out that agriculture was the main occupation of the people. So, there was a tax officer who used to collect taxes from the farmers. And what was the tax? One fourth of the agricultural produce. So, whatever produce used to be there, one fourth of it was collected as tax. There were also certain tributes which the farmers used to pay, not time to time like the taxes, but as willed by the king. So here as you can see, there are some detailed pictures of how partly Putra was at that time. Like here you can see artist imagination of the city of Patliputra. Here you can see the ruins of Patliputra at the site of Kumrahara and here as you can see these are the Patliputra Kaft capital preserved where in the Patna Museum Bihar. So obviously you can understand that the main occupation or the main craft that was flourishing at that time was pottery and carpentry. Also there were certain huge buildings which also suggest that masonry was also a flourishing craft. So now in order for the empire to flourish, they would obviously have required a good amount of money which used to come from trade. So the main Mauryan ports were Broch, Sopara and Tamralipti. Now where did they trade? Which countries were they involved as trading partners? So they used to trade with countries like Sri Lanka, Greece and China. And what did they trade? They used to trade substances like gold, diamonds, pearl, precious stones and gems. So these were the main items that used to be traded at that time. So here you see the opposite side of a Mauryan silver Karshapana coin. So these types of coin were used at that time. And here you see what kind of trade routes were prevalent at the Mauryan time. The cities that were involved in trading were Athens, Antioch, Alexandria, Bactria, Tarim Basin and the countries that were involved were 
like Burma and Sri Lanka. So these were the main trade routes of the Mauryan Empire. Now, you must have known, like today we live in joint family system, but this joint family system is not what we see only today. We know joint family prevailed from the times of the Mauryans, but one negative aspect that we find during the time of the Mauryans was the prevalence of the caste system. The caste system included Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and the Shudras. Shudra was the lowest caste which was meant to serve the upper caste like the Brahmins, Kshatriya and the Vaishya. So the Shudra were the lowest people who were meant to serve the upper caste people. We see slavery was also very prevalent which was a deciding factor for the individual's fate. So you see where we have taken so many positive aspects from the Mauryans like the administrative structures, inspiration from the Arthashastra, we also still possess some of the negative aspect. Like you see, in many backward regions, caste system and slavery is still prevalent. Despite the huge fight by people like B.R. Ambedkar to abolish the caste system and slavery, the lower castes are still discriminated against and humiliated and are indulged in human scavenging. But hopefully, with more awareness and empathy, we can change the situation. Let us now have a quick recap. As you can see here, you can say that the modern empire had a layered administration, different types of committees, different types of ministers, allocated different roles. We even had Mahamatyas, Amatyas, a spy network to ensure that there was no mischief. We also saw how there were provinces, provinces divided into district, district divided into village for the proper governing. We also saw how the capital city, Patliputra, was very beautiful and well governed. You also see the main occupation of the people at that time was agriculture, but there were flourishing crafts too, like pottery, like masonry, like carpentry. We also see how trading got wealth to the empire. but. One negative aspect that we have carried forward till today is the prevalence of caste system in some parts of our country even today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology, get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.